With Season of the Deep in full swing and the focus is around the Arc subclass, today's build is a build that would have failed last season. But in Season of the Deep, this build is an end game monster and you shouldn't overlook it. So go ahead and grab your Arc Warlocks and let's get started with the build. Today's build is focused around the Arc Warlock, more specifically the Chaos Reach subclass. Now I know, you might be scratching your head. The Chaos Reach in PvE? Yes, let me explain on why Chaos Reach is now an endgame super. With the launch of Season of the Deep, Bungie released Update 7.1.0 in which Chaos Reach was buffed. Overall, its damage was increased against PvE combatants by 25%. So if you haven't guessed it, Chaos Reach is the super of choice for today's build. Now to quickly cover the abilities, we want the Healing Rift, the Burst Glide, and the Ball of Lightning Arc Melee. Lastly, when it comes to your grenade, it's user's choice. But personally, I went with the Pulse Grenade. That one has the most damage output for PvE. Now, when it comes to choosing aspects, there's two that I highly recommend. Number one is Arc Soul. When we cast our Rift, this is going to create an Arc Soul, aka Arc Buddies, our little battle buddies that are going to help us defeat targets. Now, while we're amplified, our arc buddies are supercharged and gain increased rate of fire. And as someone who's used this build since last season, I'm telling you right now, you're going to be amplified constantly. Our next aspect of choice is Electrostatic Mind. Defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets creates an ionic trace. Collecting an ionic trace makes you amplified. Not only are these ionic traces going to make us amplified, but every time we pick one up, that's gonna grant us a little bit of ability energy. Now to quickly cover the fragments, number one is Spark of Ions. Defeating a jolted target creates an ionic trace. Yes, that is another form of creating an ionic trace. Next over, we have Spark of Discharge. Arc weapon final blows have a chance to create an ionic trace. Yes, that is another way to create an ionic trace. Next over, we have Spark of Amplitude. Rapidly defeating targets while you're amplified creates an orb of power. As you can tell, there's a ton of synergy in this build alone. While you're amplified, your arc special weapon final blows creates a blinding explosion. The main focus around our fragments is to create ionic traces, orbs of power, and arc explosions. Now before we get into the gameplay loop and the mods of choice, let's talk about our exotics of choice. With all the changes to the arc subclasses, and with the seasonal artifact granting a lot of boost to the arc abilities, the Fallen Sunstar is the main driver of today's build with the perk Ionic Conductor. Ionic traces you create move faster and grant you additional ability energy. Also, nearby allies also gain ability energy when you collect an Ionic Trace. Yes, this is gonna piggyback off Electrostatic Mind. Now, for those wondering, how much additional energy are we getting? Well, we're getting 25% per Ionic Trace for our grenade, for our melee ability, and for our class ability, we're getting 30%. Now, nearby allies will get a 10% grenade, melee, and class ability energy when you pick up those ionic traces. Essentially, when you have all these ionic traces making their way towards you and you're consuming them, you are getting 25% grenade, melee, and 30% class ability energy, while your teammates are getting 10% for all three. Now, our next weapon of choice is none other than the Thunder Lord. This comes with the exotic perk, Rain Havoc. Final blows with this weapon generate stunning lightning, strikes from above, strong against overload champions that's right the thunder lord now has overload built into it meaning if you're jumping into an end game activity this is a weapon that will grant you overload let's not forget that the thunder lord does have a catalyst where causing a lightning strike with this weapon partially reloads the magazine from reserves when it comes to taking down a ton of enemies thunder lord is going to be doing the heavy lifting in those situations now, you probably thought that the Thunder Lord is the main weapon for today's build. It's not. We have the Iterative Loop. Yes, this is a craftable weapon. And the perk you want on your craftable Iterative Loop is none other than Volt Shot. Reloading this weapon after defeating a target overcharges this weapon for a short period of time, causing it to jolt on its next hit. There are so many reasons we want to use Iterative Loop. For starters, it is a rapid fire frame fusion rifle. And when it comes to dealing damage in PvE, Rapid fire frames are the go-to option. Next over, since it does have Volt Shot, this also gives us the perk Overload. When we jolt our target, this is going to activate the Overload perk, thus stunning any enemy requiring Overload. Now the benefit of using the Iterative Loop and the Thunder Lord, this is going to activate Spark of Discharge. Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create an Ionic Trace. And when we do get a kill with the Iterative Loop and activate Volt Shot, not only are we going to be shocking the enemies, 
but we're also activating Spark of Beacons. When we're amplified, your arc special weapon final blows create a blinding explosion. Do you see what we're doing? We're double dipping into Volt Shot and Spark of Beacons. Now, when it comes to choosing your kinetic weapon, this is ultimately up to you and the activity you plan on jumping into. If your activity requires anti-barrier rounds, you can always utilize an auto rifle. If it requires unstoppable rounds, you can always utilize unstoppable hand cannon. Now let's quickly cover the mods for today's build. For our helmet, we want to utilize one special ammo finder mod, one power preservation mod, and one arc siphon mod. The reason we went with arc siphon is because of the iterative loop and the thunderlord. Both of these weapons will activate that mod. Next over, when we get kills with our Chaos Reach, this will activate Power Preservation, thus generating an additional orb of power for our allies. Now getting into our gauntlets, we want to utilize one heavy handed mod. When we get a melee final blow, this creates an orb of power. This is going to activate when we get a kill with that ball of lightning. Our next mod is Firepower. Your grenade final blows create an orb of power. This build is going to be generating so many ionic traces, we're going to see our abilities back frequently thus allowing us to utilize firepower and heavy handed more often. Lastly, we have bolstering detonation. Grants class ability energy when you cause damage with your grenade. Now when it comes to our chest piece, the only one I highly recommend is arc reserves. Since we're going to be abusing the iterative loop, you want to have a ton of ammo. Running two arc reserves will do the job. Now on our leg armor, you can run one arc scavenger, but the two most important mods you want is innervation and recuperation both of which are only going to benefit you in game. Lastly, for our class item, you want to utilize one bomber mod, one special finisher mod, and one reaper mod. Now let's cover the most important mods for this entire build, and that's going to come from your artifact. Electric armor. Stay amplified longer while your arc subclass is equipped. Next over, we have thunderous retort. Grants bonus arc super damage if cast while critically wounded or while amplified. Lasts until the end of the super activation. Not only did Chaos Reach get buffed by 25%, but with Thunderous Retort active, this is a 30% increase to our Arc Super, thus meaning a total of 55% damage increase for the Chaos Reach. In the fourth column, we have Amped Up, gain damage resistance while amplified. Now in the final column, we have Shock and All. Arc final blows while amplified summon a burst of lightning that damages and jolts targets. We also have Lightning Strikes twice. After throwing an Arc Grenade, gain increased grenade recharge for a short time. Arc final blows extend the duration of this benefit. All of these mods right here only make this build even stronger. And you don't have to do anything special to activate them. Just by being amplified, you'll activate majority of these benefits from these mods. I think this has one of the simplest gameplay loops ever. Out of every build I've created, this build right here takes the cake when it comes to simple. Before I start any engagement, I make sure I utilize my grenade and my melee ability. The reason for this is if I get any kills with any of these abilities, this is going to generate an orb of power and create ionic traces. On top of that, once I start picking up those ionic traces, this is going to give me ability energy. But if I want to generate even more ionic traces, all you have to do is get kills with the iterative loop or the Thunderlord. This is going to spawn up ionic traces. Since we're wearing the Fallen Sun Star, any ionic trace we created with our melee ability, our grenade ability, or our arc weapons, they're going to travel faster to us and give us additional ability energy. Let's not forget that your nearby teammates will also be getting additional ability energy. On top of that, if you got multi kills with your melee ability, your grenade ability, or any of your arc weapons, you probably generated a bunch of orbs. And by consuming those orbs, you're activating innervation and recuperation. So if you're lacking any grenade energy, don't worry about it. Innervation will cover that. If you took any damage or you're about to die, when you pick up those orbs, recuperation will keep you in the fight. And in no time at all, you probably have your grenade, your melee, and your rift energy back. Now, you can always start the cycle right then and there, but if you really want to get crazy with this build, activate your rift. This is going to give you a little bit of grenade energy with the perk bomber, but you're also going to activate the aspect arc soul, thus giving you arc buddies. And since you did get kills with your arc weapons and arc abilities, you're probably amplified. So this is going to make your arc souls supercharged and have an increased rate of fire. Let's not forget that if you're getting kills with the iterative loop, you probably activated Volt Shot, thus activating Spark of Ions and Spark of Discharge, both of which create an ionic trace. And since we are amplified, 
we're going to activate the fragment Spark of Amplitude and Spark of Beacons. The biggest setback of this build is utilizing your abilities. You're going to have them so often, the uptime on them is so frequent, you're going to forget to use them. Lastly, if you want to take down a ton of enemies or just a really tanky boss, don't forget to use your Chaos Reach. And if you've been getting kills with your abilities or the Innerative Loop or the Thunderlord, more than likely you're amplified. And this is going to activate Thunderous Retort, thus giving you even more damage to that Chaos Reach. And there you have it, one of the best builds for Season of the Deep. I think we can really appreciate the changes Bungie made to the Arc subclasses, especially the Chaos Reach. If you plan on taking this build into the newest dungeon or the reprise raid, let me know down below. I want to know how it pans out. Thank you so much for stopping by. You enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.